I am here at Kroger today and it is very, very cold. I'm here looking for the best deals to feed one person for a week for $10. Is it possible? Let's go see. Normally in this area, Kroger is highly competitive with Aldi and Walmart, especially during a good sale, but I didn't see anything in this week's ad that told me that this challenge would be at all successful, so it's definitely going to be a stretch. My goal with these challenges is a balanced diet, but that's not always possible either. I was very happy to see this digital download offer of $1.27 for boxes of oatmeal packets. Now, I should have gotten the original, but I decided to get a flavor variety pack, but I'm happy with that too. The canisters were going to be too expensive at $1.79, and you had to buy five of anything with a blue tag to get that price. The smaller canisters are also $1.79, but they just don't fit into how I want to do a challenge at a $10 price point. Now, the challenges I do that are $15, yeah, I mean, it would fit into that. But let's move on, okay? So I see this cart full of beautiful produce at $1 a bag. There's a number of ways I could do this challenge, all right? But I do have a limited budget for produce, and I decide to get a bag of apples. And I'm so excited to say it because apples, actually there's a sale price of $1.88 a pound for the apples, which to me is a high price. So I really, I jumped on this. And then next up, I saw another bag of produce that would fit really well into this challenge. I see a bag of zucchini here. And just, there's a lot of stuff right there, but I had to choose only a little bit. Now I have to note that my husband did pick up some other bags of produce up for a dollar for us to take home outside of this challenge. Here is the Kroger circular. And as you can see, there's 87 cents a pound asparagus. And that's what I was originally going to get. But considering that asparagus has those woody tips on part of it, I'd have to cut it off and not really use it. I went for the zucchini. I thought that was a better deal. Kroger has some great prices on some leafy greens. Let me show you here. There is kale at 89 cents. There are collard greens at 89 cents as well as turnip greens at 89 cents. Now I am going to pick out turnip greens here for 89 cents and if you've never had these before i'm going to talk about them a little bit later in the video so don't be turned off right away by me picking these out next i am looking for a meat product now i know i have a low price point so i don't even know if it's possible especially in the type of recipe i want to make but let's see i generally like to buy unprocessed meat but the problem is it's hard to find that kind of meat in anything under like three pounds, like a three pound pack of chicken breast. So I decided to check out this John Morrell sausage. And last time I bought this, it was a dollar. But here I see they are a dollar 19, still really a great deal. But you know, there's definitely some inflation going on there. What I really want to get is some ham. That's also at a great price at 219, but one is a dollar cheaper than the other. So for now, I'm going to put both in my cart and just see how everything plays out. See which one I'll have to put back. I am going to reach for some whole grains. So I see this whole grain pasta, Kroger brand, normally four for $5. I get two for a dollar each. Next, yeah, surprise, surprise, I'm in the bean section. A lot of these beans used to be around a dollar per bag, but I'm just happy to be able to find a bag of navy beans at $1.29. I don't know if you can see any of these price tags here. So I decide to keep the John Morrell sausage and put back the ham because it is going to give me about a dollar more to spend. So where am I going to spend that dollar? I decide to go to the baking aisle because I'm looking for milk and fresh dairy milk right now is out of my price range. But I see this evaporated canned milk for $1.25 each. Now, this used to be about 79 or 89 cents last time I bought evaporated milk. So I think that is quite a jump. 
Anyway, this is my cart, so let's go ahead and head to the checkout and see what the damage is. Just one person in line in front of me wearing some kind of fancy pants. Can you type in a price for me or? What the price per pound is? It's just 89 cents a bunch. Okay. Rather than pound. Good Yay, I made it! 987. It's like a slot machine going off. Well, it's time to go home and think about what to put together with these purchases. What am I going to be able to make? I would have liked to have gotten a little bit more for the money, but there's not much you can do about that right now. So the best I can do is go home and just make the best meals that I can with the help of the pantry. Thank you, Peggy and Rodney, Jilly Beans, Candy, Zaya Fine Art, and the rest of my PayPal, Cash App, and Patreon contributors. For those of you who have never tasted turnip greens before and, you know, really don't like trying anything new out that, you know, you might think might be a little bitter or something, I thought they were going to be bitter too, like mustard greens, but they're actually somewhat mild. They kind of have a flavor profile, something between raw spinach leaves, which are really mild, and kale, which has, you know, just a little bit of a bite to it, and they are very high in vitamin A and vitamin K, very high. I mean, many hundreds of percents. In fact, I'm going to have a nutrition label here for you for what one cup of chopped, cooked turnip greens has in it. When I came up with the grocery budget challenge concept almost three years ago, when I started filming these videos back in May of 2019, I steered away from oatmeal because I knew that that is one of the most expected ingredients because I wanted to show people, hey, there's a variety of things that you can make. Now, I know for most people, these apples are not going to be a dollar, but you could do bananas, which you see in so many of these challenges now. Now, for each of these five days, there's going to be half of a diced apple, and it actually makes quite a bit two oatmeal packets a day so what flavor should i have everyone i think i'm going to go for maple and brown sugar each can of evaporated milk is 12 ounces and they contain one and a half cups of milk in them each morning you're going to need one cup of liquid so that's going to come out to about two-thirds a cup of water and about one third of a cup of the evaporated milk. So let's add the milk in. I'm just gonna let that come to a boil. I'm gonna get that quickly into the oatmeal. Add the apples on top and just add a little bit of cinnamon on top. And there you have breakfast for five out of seven days. A lot of flavor for a low cost. Mm. For breakfast number two, you're going to have fried apples for two out of seven days. So basically, because there were six apples in the bunch, there is supposed to be about one and three quarter apples for each of two days. For the pantry ingredients, you will need some oil and sugar and cinnamon and graham cracker crumbs. Now, if you don't have graham cracker crumbs, you can use cornmeal. It won't taste as good, but it'll still be, it'll still be good. I am putting two tablespoons of oil in the pan, one tablespoon of sugar, as well as some cinnamon, just sprinkled in to taste. Just get that mixed around. Now add all of the apples in. Mix the apples around in the sauce. Now go ahead and turn that on a low to medium heat and cover for about three minutes. The apples are done. Two tablespoons of graham cracker crumbs. So final step is just add a little bit more cinnamon and that is breakfast number two. And take a bite. Mm.
This John Morel sausage is going to be multi-purpose. I am going to use one of the sausages for lunches through the week and one of the sausages for the dinners. I'm rationing the sausage according to the recipes that it's going to be used for. So this smaller piece here is going to be for two days of the week for the baked beans and sausage. And here, this side is going to be for the soup, which is for five days of the week. For lunch number one, it is going to be greens, beans, and sausage soup. And basically for the sausage portion, you're just going to cut it in lengthwise and then slice it down the middle so you get these little uh, half pieces right here. You're going to use about a third of the turnip greens. And then from the pantry, uh, the most important things are chicken bouillon, Italian seasoning, and onion powder. I make this soup entirely to taste, and that's what I suggest you do too. You can also add things like uh, soy sauce or Worcestershire sauce to uh, make it like maybe a little richer, deeper tasting if you want. All right, I decided to make a slight change. You know, when you're cooking, sometimes you just come up with things on the fly and decide to go with it. So I was originally going to use the chicken bouillon and instead I decided to change to beef bouillon and soy sauce because I figured it would taste really good with the sausage and the greens this time. Yeah, switching to the beef bouillon, adding a little bit of soy sauce, that is amazing. As far as lunch number two goes, the only items that you're going to need from the haul are navy beans and the sliced smoked sausage portion that I told you about. You can use any combination of condiments from your pantry. So there's soy sauce here, yellow mustard, vinegar, brown sugar. You can just use barbecue sauce if you don't want to put you know, your own sauce together. There's Worcestershire sauce, maple syrup, ketchup, and herbs and spices, especially I like to use onion powder and black pepper. So you can really use any combination of pantry condiments that you want because everybody tends to be pretty individual in how they make their baked beans. If you'd like my recipe, I'm going to have it on my Patreon starting in March. Here we go, I am finally done the homemade baked beans with the sausage. And for those of you who are not too crazy about this kind of dish, remember soup is going to be for five days out of the week and this is just for two days of the week, okay? Definitely worth waiting for. For the first dinner, which is going to be eaten for four nights out of the week, I have some water almost at a boil. This is very easy to make. It calls for a quarter of a box of pasta, uh, plus a fourth of the smoked sausage chopped up, one of the zucchini, and olive oil, Italian seasoning, and lemon pepper. I'm going to tell you, I wanted to get a fresh lemon in this haul and it just didn't allow for it because $10 is literally so extreme and I'd rather have uh, more important ingredients in the meantime. So I realized that uh, these are dollar bags from Kroger and a lot of stores probably won't have those available at the moment that you go shopping. So one of the options you can use is other vegetables. I especially recommend green beans, either fresh or frozen or canned if you have it. I know a lot of you grow and can your own vegetables. But I'm gonna go ahead and use these ingredients. I'm gonna cut up this zucchini and we are going to get started. Go ahead and get the sausage in the pan. I don't like zucchini overcooked, so what I'm going to do is for the last minute that the pasta boils, I'm going to get the zucchini in there. I think that's enough. Let's go ahead and drain everything. Let's very quickly get some olive oil in there to taste. Now it is time to add the lemon pepper. Lots and lots and lots of it. I'm addicted to this stuff. See, this is really going to be the main flavor in this dish, so you don't have to be shy with it. There's also some sodium in there, so you don't even need to add salt and Italian seasoning. So these are both to taste, there's no measurements. Okay, here we go, a large bite. 
That is so good. You would swear there was fresh lemon in there. Oh my goodness. Dinner number two, which is eaten on three nights, consists of whole grain pasta, turnip greens, olive oil, soy sauce, and Italian seasoning. You're going to take about a quarter of the box of pasta. So for each of the three nights, you're going to have about one third of the turnip greens. So I already separated them out. So this is tonight's third. Cut up the turnip greens. And right after you do that, drain most but not all of the water from the pasta. And it's going to be just enough water to allow it to wilt and cook through just enough. Do that on medium heat just for a couple of minutes. Drizzle in one tablespoon of oil as well as one tablespoon of soy sauce. Mix that real quickly. Finally, add some Italian seasoning. Some crushed red pepper from the pantry would also be good. So let's just put a little bit of that on top. Oh, that is so good. And it's hot too, so, but I like that. That's why I like to add the pepper flakes to it. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked all of these meal ideas. I know some of them were pretty darn basic. I'm most proud of my dinner ideas because, you know, they, they're, they give a little bit of variety to um, an extreme budget. So tell me in the comments what you would do to any of these dishes to make them more customized for yourself. See you guys in the comments and talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me.